Hello everybody and welcome to The Vloggy Thing, the series where I sit here and ramble on about absolutely nothing. At least nothing relevant, nothing important. Um, today I actually have a list of things to do. I have it up on my nice screen here. Uh, the first thing I want to actually go over is something that you guys might have possibly noticed kind of already. The observant of you have already noticed. The unobservant of you may have also noticed. I don't know. I'd notice it and I'm not terribly observant. But you might be wondering what that blue stuff is back there. Why is there blue on my wall? Uh, well, that is uh, improvised acoustic foam. Poking around on Amazon the other day looking for acoustic foam because the echo in here is absolutely fucking ridiculous. I know you guys can't hear it, but that's because the mic is like right here and I have the gain turned way, way, way down. But even as I'm talking here, I can hear the echo. And when I'm, you know, listening back to what I'm saying, I can still hear the echo. Um, you could probably hear the echo on YouTube as well. Uh, but you'd have to have really good headphones to do it. And I do have really good headphones. Um, I don't know where my headphones went. There they are. These guys here, they are uh, Skull Candy Skull Crusher. Uh, they are $70 headphones, and uh, I would not recommend buying them. I really, really wouldn't, and there's a reason for that. And I don't know where the hell they went. Hang on a second. Where did they go? What the hell? I wasn't planning on doing this, so I'm not actually prepared for this. Um, there they are. Okay, these guys. Just a tiny pair of tangled now uh, in-ear headphones. Uh, these are Skull Candy in-ear headphones. They are actually designed for the phone. You can tell because there's a microphone right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So yeah, little tiny in-ear cameras. Uh, I found these at Best Buy while I was looking for a brand new headset for my phone. I had a, uh, a Jawbone headset. Um, Jawbone? No. No, it was Blue Ant. It was a Blue Ant Bluetooth headset for my phone. And it was a really good headset, and I really, really liked it. Uh, but I accidentally left it in my pocket when I went through the washer. And uh, you kind of destroy electronics when you do that. There is a chance that you can actually save the electronics if everything works out perfectly, but these things were on when they went through the washer, uh, so it destroyed the headset. Um, and then I got another one. I forget which one it was, but it was absolutely terrible. I got rid of it fairly quickly. Uh, so I was looking for another headset, and I'm looking at Jawbones. I'm like, I want a Jawbone. They actually turned out pretty good, but they don't fit my ear properly, and they don't, they don't work very well. Well, no, they work amazing. They just don't fit my ear properly. Then, and they're kind of expensive. That was the second thing I was going to say. I don't know why I said they don't work very well. They work they work amazingly well. I like Jawbones, but they don't fit my ear, and they're expensive. Um, I wanted another Blue Ant because that worked great for me, but they were also kind of expensive, and I was broke at the time. Still broke, but... Uh, <laughs> Same exact problem would come up. So I was looking at other headsets, looking at cheaper ones, but I didn't want to make the same mistake I made with the previous headset, which I bought a cheaper headset, and it turned out to be absolute crap. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, what if I look at wired headsets? And I found these Skull Candies, the little bubble wrap or bubble case, you know, the, the horrible plastic bubble case that you always tear your hand open when you open them up. I, I use scissors, so I don't have to worry about that. But, uh, you yeah, know, they were $20. And, I mean, it's just, they're designed for the phone. They, and, uh, the, yeah, they're the, the stereo micro headphone, no, mini headphone jack, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, I'm like, okay, well, let's try these things out. I'm like, okay, they're stereo headphones. So the first thing I did with them was fire up a, just a little uh, MP3 file that I had. I don't even remember what song it was, but I was just blown away with the sound of it. I was just absolutely floored. I'm like, $20 headphones out, hands down outperform my $70 over the, ear head, over the ear headphones. And I don't know if that's just because they're in ear headphones, but totally, totally outperforms it. Um, what, why did I get off of that tangent? I got off of that tangent because I was talking about headphones to notice the echo in the recording. Yeah, you could probably hear the echo in the recording. Um, so this stuff, I was looking at acoustic foam, 
on Amazon, and acoustic foam is not cheap. Uh, and the reason there is a reason for that, and the reason for that is because of how it's shaped. It has to be shaped just right to catch the best types or the 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 you know the exact wavelengths that you want to catch to avoid echo and that kind of thing. And there's high range, min range, and low range, and all that fun crap. And I know far too much about acoustics than I really really need to. Um, but it's like eighteen to twenty dollars to like fifty dollars a square foot. I don't have that kind of money, especially to fill up areas in here, the areas that I would need to fill up. Um, I don't have that kind of money. So I was, uh, you know, I was staring at that for a little while, and then it dawned on me, well, why don't I take the acoustic out of my search and just search for foam? So instead of acoustic foam, it's just foam. Um, So I did that, and I was poking around, and I found, you know, different types of foam, all kinds of different types of foam, and then I found these guys. Um, they are convoluted foam and they're, they're for beds. Like you throw them down on the bed and you throw the sheet on top of it. And it's like one of them padded beds, you know, you know how mattresses have like the pillow top now. That's, that's what these are. Um, so, you know, and they were like 30 bucks a piece and they're huge. I mean, these ones are specifically designed for a twin size bed. So I bought four of them. There's actually four hanging up on the walls here. Um, now, you might be asking, okay, well, if they're improvised acoustic foam, then why is your microphone still t- still two inches from your face? Uh, well, th- these things work. I know they work. I walk into this room, and I can just feel it. They work well enough that I can feel it. It feels flat. It feels claustrophobic. I, I-, I don't really know how to describe it. Uh, it feels like the silence is pressing in, so you can feel that they're working. But this thing still picks up massive, massive echo, and it's ridiculous and annoys the hell out of me. So I was doing a lot of research, looking into, you know, removing echo and all that kind of stuff. And I found, I figured out two pieces of information. One, it's almost impossible to remove echo after the fact. And it makes sense. uh, How do you remove echo when the wavelength is exactly the same as your voice is just slightly delayed? Uh, so it would be quite difficult to remove it procedurally. Um, and two, the best way to actually remove echo is to get rid of the echo to begin with. So you don't, it's, it's easier to remove echo if it doesn't exist. Um, or technically it's harder to remove echo if it doesn't exist because it doesn't exist. You can't remove what doesn't exist, but that's a philosophical, philosophical debate. That's not important to this situation. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, I was just wandering around yesterday trying to figure out what I can do about the echo. Cause I'm like, how the f- do these YouTubers do it? Cause I mean, think about it. Okay. So it, it, watch, watch, uh, B double O or generic B, uh, or nerd cube do their YouTube thing. Their microphones aren't right here. Uh, I know generic B's microphone was like two, three feet in front of them. I'm like, so how the crap do they do it without all the insane echo? And I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. And and I, I'm pace the house. I pace the house when I think. I don't know why it's what I do. Uh, and then I walked into my bedroom back there. And I it, it felt different. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not a hearing thing. I don't hear things. I just kind of sense them. It's probably the hypersensitivity thing that I hear about. I actually do hear it, but it's translated in my brain differently. So it's not actually auditory or anything like that. I, I don't uh, I don't understand it. The human mind is an insanely complex and amazing thing. It's weird. Um, so here's my thought. Uh, one of the biggest problems with an echoey chamber is the floor. Okay. And as you can see in the video there, I have hardwood floors in here. They're all hardwood. Um, I have a rug here, a nice, pretty little rug that you guys cannot see. Um, And, you know, I like the rug. I want to keep the rug. But I was hoping that it would be enough. But I don't think it is. It doesn't seem to be anyways. Uh, But, I mean, walking into the bedroom, the bedroom has this very thick carpet. Um, I mean, it's thick carpet, and then it's got thick padding underneath the carpet. So I'm thinking, well... If it feels quieter in there, 
and I have nothing on those walls. I mean, I just sleep in there. I mean, I, I don't decorate it. So if I have nothing in the walls in there, and I have everything on the walls in here, but I get less echo in there, well, why don't I just move all of my shit in there? Um, so that's something that I'm going to be doing after I'm done recording this. I'm going to take all my crap from here, move it out into the living room, take all my crap from the bedroom, move it into here. So this is going to be my new bedroom. And then I'm going to take all the studio stuff and put it into that, be that bedroom, my, the, the old bedroom. And hopefully I will have better audio and I'll be able to actually put my microphone on my desk and actually be able to move and shit because... As you've noticed, as I move away, everything gets considerably quieter, and it makes it incredibly hard to hear, and that's because the gain is really, really low. Um, this is a directional mic. It's actually a multi-purpose mic. I can actually flick a little knob in the back. Uh, right now, it is set to directional mode, so theoretically stuff on the other side I shouldn't be hearing, but I hear it just as clearly, so I'm guessing it's the horrifyingly bad echo in here. Um, I guess I'll figure out how that goes, and we'll go on from there. I don't know. Um, another thing you may be noticing is that I'm glancing over here every now and then. Normally, I'll look here, I'll look down, which you might not actually notice, and I'll look over there. And I look over there because that's where Audacity sits. I have a secondary monitor over there, and Audacity sits there, and I can keep track of times and crap like that and make sure that this thing is still recording. Um, so that's why I look at Audacity over there. The Normally what I do is I keep the recording software, the stuff I use with the webcam, behind the camera. That way I'm looking at me because I always feel like I need to be looking at the person in the eye that I'm talking to. And that's really hard on YouTube because you guys won't be watching this for, I don't know, anywhere between like 12 hours and a month. I don't know. So it's kind of hard to look at you in the eyes when I'm looking into the future. Um, so I put the camera or I put the, 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 the video behind it. That way I'm looking there and I can actually see things. Um, it, it worked out fairly well. Uh, but recently like yesterday, actually, I had this small problem. Uh, I was trying to record this, and, you know, I would open up the Life... Wait, what is this software called? The Microsoft LifeCam Studio. As far as I can tell, it's the only software that I can find that's actually free that works with this camera, and it works well. Um, I think I could, I could probably use... Um, what is that called? Is Get another webcam software. Yawcam. That's it. Uh, Yawcam. Uh, I could probably use that, but as far as I can tell, it's never been updated for the uh, 16 by 9, uh, 1280 by 720. Um, it's only 4 by 3, and that doesn't work well since this is a widescreen camera. Uh, the Microsoft LifeCam software can record at 1280 by 720, even though right now it's actually bitching at me about it. <clears throat> So I'm not 100% sure about the video quality in this one, but we're going to go with it because this is the fifth time I've tried to record it. I'm sick and tired of doing it, and it is recording, and that's recording, and the sync is going to be good, or at least as best as I can be. So hopefully I don't have a problem. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Ooh, that's a problem. I remember when I tried to record building that PC, I had a sync issue because this was recording slow when it was on a laptop. Well, anyways, uh, so I had Audacity open, and I tried to open the Microsoft Life Cam, and then it complained about uh, initialization error. So I closed out everything. I pulled all the USB cables, plugged them back in, opened up the Microsoft Life Cam. It worked. It showed the picture and everything like that. Then I opened up Audacity, and it took like 10 minutes to open. And I'm like, come on, Audacity, hurry up. And then it opened, and I hit record on Audacity, and then it popped up and said, cannot connect to device, or some such error like that. I forget. And I'm like, what, what the crap? You were just working two seconds ago. So I fiddled with it. I couldn't get it back to working. I eventually tracked it down that one will not work with the other. And it's kind of pissing me off. Uh, if LifeCam Studio is open, it's, it seems to be trying to catch all of the recording equipment instead of just the webcam that it's supposed to. So it seems to be trying to grab control of this thing. Um, and then when Audacity opens up, it tries to grab control of this thing and the camera as well because the camera has a uh, microphone built into it. 
a microphone that I'm not using, by the way, because it is garbage. Oh, it is a terrible, terrible microphone. Or this is just a really shitty room for acoustics. I don't know. I guess I'll figure that out later. Um, so I, I I was spent several hours yesterday trying to figure out why it's not working. Uh, so I'm like, eventually I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to bed. So as I was going to bed, I had this wise idea. Well, why don't I fire up the laptop and record the audio with the laptop? That'll work. Um, I mean, it's it's a Core i3 laptop, but I'm just recording audio. It can't be that per- that nasty or anything like that. So I did that um, and found out fairly quickly that Windows 8 does not like the Blue Yeti Pro. Uh, and I did some research into it. The Blue Yeti Pro, it's known to have problems with it to the point where on their website, it actually says... Having problems with Windows 8? Try this workaround. And you click on the workaround and it actually tells you to download the Windows 7 drivers, put it into Windows 7 compatibility mode, and then install the drivers. Doesn't work. Didn't work for me anyways. Um, And I was digging into it and I was looking into it and I found that other people are having the same exact problem. And they're pissed off at Blue Yeti. Now, I don't know if I need to be pissed off at Blue Yeti or I need to be pissed off at Microsoft for changing the architecture uh from what i've been seeing with windows 8 and what i've been reading about with this thing i would be more inclined to blame microsoft um i get from what i've been seeing from how this thing acts it seems to be a windows 8 issue not the microphone um I know a lot of people get really really pissed off it's like oh my god it doesn't work with windows 8 you bastards why don't you update your drivers they did there are two different versions of the Windows 8's drivers. There's the auto install one, and then there's a manual install one. Neither of them work. I can't get them to work. Um, and so I really, really think that it's a Windows 8 problem because Microsoft has been changing the architecture. They seem to be fiddling with Windows 8 uh, because, fuck, nobody likes Windows 8. Um, seriously, okay. Let me give you a little bit of background. I've said this before, so regular viewers already know my history, but I started with computers back before there was such a thing called Windows. I started with DOS, like DOS 2 or something like that. I don't actually know. Um, Yeah, I think so. DOS was invented in the 70s, right? I was born in the 80s. so. Um, So I started with very early DOS. I was around when Windows... Uh, 3.1 started to become popular. Uh, I never played with Windows 1 or Windows 2 back then, but I did play with Windows 3.1 at the time. Um, and I remember when it was brand new, and it's like, oh my god, it's Windows 3.1. That's a, that, that, that's an amazing thing. It's not a black screen with a blinking cursor. I mean, this is awesome. Granted, I had played with Mac- or Macintosh at the time, and I don't think Linux was a thing yet. No, Unix was. I played with Unix systems back then. Uh, I played with Unix, I played with uh, Macintosh, and I played with Windows. Uh, But I don't think Linux was a thing back then yet. At least if it was, it wasn't in the collection that my dad had. Um, Yeah, my dad was a developer for a big company in central Pennsylvania. And uh, so he had like seven or eight PCs plugged in all at once. Um you know, back in the 80s, that was an impressive goddamn thing. Uh, I mean, today, seven PCs is a bit ridiculous still, even in a full house. But uh, back then, that was holy shit level of insane. Um, So yeah, I had plenty of experience playing with Windows, plenty of experience playing with DOS, plenty of experience playing with Apple stuff. Um, And then I was you know, right there on the bleeding edge of technology when Windows 95 came out, Windows 98, 2000, ME, XP. Um, oh, I'm skipping NT4, aren't I? Uh, I did. I have had experience with NT4 as well. Uh, I know Windows 3.45, I believe was the numbers, was a thing. I never played with that one. At least I don't think I did. Um, but yeah, XP, Vista, 7, 8. I have played with Windows basically all my life. I know Windows. I know computers. And as an expert, 
as a self-proclaimed expert, I fucking hate Windows 8. I do. I just straight up hate Windows 8. Um, I mean, it goes beyond just the user interface. The user interface pisses me off to absolutely no end. They're, they made it a little bit better with Windows 8.1, uh, but it's still kind of annoying because I seem to be lacking quite a few uh, programs. Like the start screen doesn't have all of the stuff that the start menu had. You have to go hunt for it. They still exist, but you have to know where to look. And that's fucking annoying. Um, or you just do what I do, hit Windows key R and then type it into the run command, <laughs> which is what I tend to do. I don't go to the start screen anymore. I can't wait till they update Windows 8.1 to put back the start menu because then I can find crap again. Of course, my dad postulated that that is just going to be a thing. Yes, okay, it might show up in Windows 9, but it's not going to be the default setting, and then it's just going to fade out of existence, just like the original start menu in Windows XP, if y'all remember that. Probably not, considering XP is, what, 12 years old now? So a lot of you would have been uh, wee lads and wee lasses back then. Um Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Windows 8 is pissing me off. Uh, so I believe it's Windows 8 that's actually the problem, not the Blue Yeti microphone, and it's kind of annoying. Now, on a positive side, we got a new toy in YouTube. Um, now, I know YouTube has been pissing off a lot of people recently um, just because it just, it's kind of annoying how they're doing certain things, how they're treating certain things, um, but... They're trying. They are actually trying to make better, things better for both the end user and the and, and the con content creator as well. Um, and I'm noticing it as a content creator how they're actually trying to do this. Like one of the things that they're trying to do, I mean, you, I'm sure you, by now you guys have heard of the tip jar. Um, once it becomes available, I will sign up for it. However, I will not be begging for tips because I know how bad that stuff can be. Um, basically I'll put it, I'll put it this way. If I ever put up the tip jar, it'll be like this. Um, if you do not use ad block and you want to support me, just keep not using ad block. That's fine with me. If you do use ad block and you feel bad about using ad block, that's why the tip jar exists. Uh, if you do use ad block and you don't feel bad about ad block, well, I'll continue not feeling bad about it. I don't feel bad about it. Um, <laughs> Okay, I do kind of feel bad. Oh, oh, by the way, um, I threw this out before. I don't remember. No, I think I put it in a comment of another video. Um, not any of my videos. It was somebody else's video. Um, I was complaining about the lengths of advertisements in the videos, and somebody just threw up there. Yeah, but anything over like 30 seconds you can skip. Uh, one, that's not 100% true. Uh, two... I heard from Total Biscuit that if you hit the skip button, that person gets nothing. Okay. Uh, today, that has been, um, I would say confirmed, but confirmed is not the correct word. Confirmed would come from YouTube. Uh, reaffirmed is the correct word there by Nerd Cubed. He said the same exact thing um, that if you hit the skip button on a YouTube video, that person doesn't get paid anything. Okay, well, the content creator, the video that you're trying to watch doesn't get paid anything. So if you hit the skip button, uh, that's just like using ad block. So if you're constantly hitting the skip button, just, just get ad block. It saves you a whole bunch of time. Um, where was I going with this? I don't remember. I think that's all I was going with it. Um... Yeah, anyways, uh, let's just, just jump back right on to the topic I was trying to talk about. Um, okay, so I don't know if anybody, anyone here uses it. I don't know if anybody has even seen it. But my end roll at the end of my videos, all my videos that have the, the crazy bunny eyes, I don't know if anybody's even noticed that. But uh, yeah, it has the crazy bunny eyes, and it has links to my playlists of my three main series right now. Uh, Quest for Creative, Idiot in Space, and the vloggy thing. Uh, now the playlists are kind of useful. That way you can just click on the first one and it will just play through all of them. If you like doing that kind of thing, I don't know. It's your choice. Um, I do it. 
I do it. I like doing it. Uh, not for my videos because, well, I made my videos. I know how they go. I don't need to watch them again. <laughs> uh, so, but adding the videos to the playlist, I always forget to do that. I always forget to, I mean, you can do it when you upload a video. It's just right there on the screen, and I always forget to do it. Uh, but they've added a thing where it's a rule now. Uh, you can uh, auto-add is what it's called. You can go into playlist settings, and you can hit auto-add, and it will automatically add your videos to the playlist. Um, so you don't have to remember to do it anymore. You can just add a rule, tell it that anything with the title with the words the vloggy thing in it go into the vloggy thing playlist. And my vloggy thing playlist is already organized by publish date. So, I mean, it's that simple. I don't have to worry about the playlist anymore. They they make themselves. Um, and I like that. Uh, so that's that's actually pretty awesome. Uh, what else is on my list of things to talk about? Uh, yes. All right. I drive a Jeep Liberty Limited. Um, 2006 Jeep Liberty Limited. It's it's a luxury SUV, but it's a Jeep. So it's got the Jeep suspension. And since I drive in Pittsburgh, that's kind of necessary. Um, anybody who lives in Pittsburgh or drives through Pittsburgh on a regular basis gets the joke. Technically, anybody who drives through Pennsylvania on a regular basis will get that joke. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, so um, now the Jeep has had problems in the past. There are inherent problems with the Liberty series from what I'm gathering anyways. Uh, that's from my understanding why they basically stopped making the Liberties and went back to the Cherokees. Um, but... Uh, like uh, last year, I had a problem where the, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the transmission fluid pan or something like that rusted out. It's apparently a known problem with the Jeep Liberties. Uh, it rusted out and all of my transmission fluid ended up in the driveway instead of in the transmission where it belonged. Uh, and trying to get it up my nasty ass driveway burned out the transmission. So I had to get it completely rebuilt last year which was expensive as fuck. Noise the hell out of me. Um, recently, like over the winter, I got a recall notice for the Jeep Liberty, uh, basically saying that in low-speed rear-end collisions, it's common and very likely that the gas tank will spring a leak. I'm like, oh, great. My Jeep is Bender's ass. There we go. Um... I like their fix, though. Their fix was creative. So what they decided to do, instead of you know, having to tear out the tank and replace it with another one or move the tank, they just decided to reinforce the ass end of the car, which fits since the, from the you know, firewall to the back of the car is all passenger compartment. Uh, it makes sense that you can just reinforce that. Like uh, in other cars, like in sedans and stuff with the, the, the trunk that actually opens up, uh, the separated trunk, I should say. Uh, the trunk and the engine compartment are set to compress. They're crumple zones to protect the passenger compartment and the car that you hit. Um, that's why if you actually ever, if you witness a wreck, uh, the passenger compartment's fine, but you'll see the engine, it's squished. It, it just looks absolutely horrific wreck, but it'll be like a 35 mile an hour wreck. Or something like that. Uh, that's because of crumple zones. Uh, it's basically padding to slow down the accident to do less damage to the people inside the car. Um, well, I drive a Jeep Liberty. The cargo bay is part of the passenger compartment. So my cargo bay is reinforced already. Uh, so what they do is instead of dealing with the tank, they will, for free, put on a hitch. Now, the hitch will connect to the frame on either side, and it has a big, giant-ass metal bar that co connects the two, um, obviously for pulling crap, and it reinforces the ass end. Uh, I like that idea. That's a, actually a creative idea. Um, I never actually went for it because it was in the middle of winter, and I'd have to drive to my dealer to get it installed, and I'm too lazy to do that in the winter, and I have since lost the recall notice 
Um, granted, I probably just have to call down there and be like, hey, um, I lost the recall notice, but I know there's a recall on the 2006 Jeep Liberties. Uh, I should probably get that taken care of. And they would they would probably walk me through exactly what I need to do. I'm just, well, lazy, as I've mentioned before. Uh, and every time I have been in rear-end collisions before, uh, people, two different people actually hit me. There was a guy in a little tiny-ass sports car driving so close to me that I couldn't see him over my spare tire. He was driving that close to me. Um, and he rear-ended me. I stopped. He didn't. He rear-ended me. <laughs> but guess what? I have this giant freaking full-size spare tire on the back of the Jeep. The full-size spare tire took the brunt of the damage. So did his hood. Um, then I was driving another time down the same exact road, in fact, and uh, somebody two cars in front of me jacked on the brakes to make a left turn all of a sudden because apparently they had no fracking clue where they were going but decided to speed down the road at the same time. Uh, well, I live in Pittsburgh. Everybody else was speeding down the road at the same time as well. Um, if you're ever in that situation where you're driving down the road and you realize, oh, crap, that's the turn I need to make, but it's not enough time to safely slow down, make the next turn. Seriously. This guy jacked on the brake. The truck's in front. The truck in front of me jacked on his brakes. I jacked on my brakes. The BMW behind me jacked on their brakes, but it wasn't enough time. The truck stopped. I stopped. The BMW hit me. Um, the full size spare tire took the damage, and so did the BMW's hood. There was a nice dent in the hood. Um, I thought it was hilarious. Um, I didn't bother with insurance or anything like that. Jeep had no damage whatsoever my computer just went to sleep hopefully that wasn't it didn't stop recording or anything uh no it didn't good okay uh i just hadn't moved the mouse long enough it the monitors turned off um so yeah um anyway so the recent problem that i'm having with the jeep is the tires okay i, I bought the jeep used um I never replaced the tires, and I would assume that the guy that owned it before me never replaced the tires either. I'm up to 60,000 miles on the Jeep, and I need new tires. I mean, that's that's to be expected. 60,000 miles is actually pretty good for a eh, mid-class tire. So I need to replace my tires. Um, so I went down to Monroe. I mean, it's right down the street. It's actually within walking distance if I'm willing to walk a decent distance. Um, so I figured I'll just take it down there get them to replace the tires. Uh, while they're doing that, I'll go home. Uh, you know, uh, well, I go down there and they tell me, oh, it's going to cost $525. And I went, no, and walked out. Not kidding. I'm used to the Cherokee. Uh, I had a 2001 Cherokee Sport and I could get tires for the Cherokee Sport for like 50 bucks a tire. Hella cheap. That's what I'm used to. I'm not willing to spend more than $100 a tire. Well, I wasn't willing to spend more than $100 a tire because I went up to Nash National Tire and Battery and talked to them about getting my tires replaced. And they actually, you know, they walked me through all of this. They, you know, showed me the list of all the tires that are in there. They actually treated me better than Monroe. So I'm going to NB, NB, or NTB to get my tires replaced. Um, and... The tires on my Jeep are just expensive. Uh, I mean, the cheapest tires on my Jeep are a hundred bucks a tire. So Monroe wasn't trying to screw me or anything. Um, it was my ignorance, so I'm not blaming them in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, I was looking in. I was like, hundred bucks a tire. That's a bit ridiculous. Okay, so. I'm broke. What can you do for me? And they went, okay, well, if you go with these tires, and he went three down the list. The, the, he organized the list for me from for lowest price to highest price. And three down the list, so third cheapest tire. Uh, they're $117 a tire, but they're buy three, get one free. I'm like, oh, I like that deal. Um, that'll save me a bit of money. Let's go with that. Uh, so you're like, okay, so we'll schedule you for Saturday at 3 p.m. And we'll, you know, we'll place your tires. I'm like, sweet, awesome. So let's, so Saturday comes around, I go down there, and I'm like, hey, I'm scheduled to get my tires replaced. And uh, they're like, all right, 
um, you talked with us before. I'm like, yeah, um, you know, I got that Jeep Liberty out there. And, uh, you know, there was a, the deal about uh, buy three, get one free. And he's like, oh, that sounds familiar. Do you know the size of your tires? And I'm like, no, no, I have no idea what the size of my tires are. I don't even know where to look on the tire to figure out what the size of the tire is. I really don't. I barely know anything about cars. Okay, I know an ass load about cars, but um, nothing about modern cars, really. Uh, but, uh, you know, so he's like, well, this sounds familiar, and I think we might have a problem if they're the right size tires. Uh, so he goes out, he looks at the tires, and he goes, yep, they're the right size tires. We have a problem. I'm like, oh, yeah? He's like, "The we have two dozen of these tires on order because everybody wanted the buy three, get one free deal. They never showed up. Um, so somewhere out there are two dozen tires, uh, two dozen relatively cheap tires just floating in the void somewhere. No idea what happened to them. Um, and apparently everybody else did exactly what I just what I was about to do. I'm like, okay, well, what are your other options? I really need to get my tires replaced. And he looks at the tires and goes, yeah, you need to really get your tires replaced. Um, so he goes and he looks it up. He goes, okay, well, the problem is everybody else said the exact same thing you did. And the best I can do right now with the tires that we have is 700 bucks, 700 plus dollars to replace your tires. And I'm like, uh, no, no, <laughs> that's not happening. I don't have that kind of money. He's like, okay, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll look around. I will find a you know set of tires that I can get shipped here as fast as possible, but I will lock you in with a buy three, get one free deal. Um, and he looked it up really quick on the computer. He's like, okay, so the closest ones that are around are in our new Lor- are in New Orleans. Um, and I have them on order. Or, he, he ordered them right then and there. He's like, I got them on order right now to get up here, um, all four of them, and hopefully they will be up here Tuesday. And, you know, we'll give you a call on Tuesday, or we'll give you a call when they arrive so you can schedule a time to come in and get them replaced. Um, for the record... It is now 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday. No call. Which I would assume that just means that it's a little bit harder to actually get the tires here. Uh, uh, but he's like, well, you should be able to run your car for a few days on those tires they, you know, without any kind of risk. Um, which is good. I mean, I mean, they're rubber. How, how hard could it be? I, I, don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so... I'm like, okay, well, give me a call when you get them. Well, that was three days ago, and I'm still waiting to hear from them. Hopefully, I can do it. What really pisses me off, though, um, is if I actually knew where the hell a junk shop is or junk junkyard is or whatever I'm looking for, I don't actually know anymore. Um, I bet you I could probably go there, find a couple of you know old Jeep Liberty sitting there scrapped for one reason or another, pull the tires off of them, probably the entire wheel, you know, the tire and the rim all together, probably get them for 50 bucks, the entire thing from a scrapyard. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but I don't even know what I'm looking for. I mean, as I'm sure you guys can tell from the simple fact that I said junkyard and scrapyard, and those are two different things. Um, And yeah, I don't know where to look. Uh, My old manager... Uh, he would know, but he lives in Trinidad now, so I have no way of getting hold of him. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully those tires come in. Uh, and there is an advantage of buying them from N- NTB, uh, and that is that they're new. <laughs> and obviously they're installed by experts who can balance them, unlike me, who totally, totally can't. Because one, I don't know what the hell balancing a tire means, and two, I don't have the tools to do it anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm rambling on. We're over the 40-minute mark, at least I am. Uh, the first part is going to be edited out, of course, so I have absolutely no idea how long this is actually going to be, but we're going to be approaching the 40-minute mark if we haven't already passed it. Um, so I will end up the uh, end up the video here, and then I'm going to go start moving furniture. And I will see you guys in the next episode, in the next video, whatever it is that I make. It'll probably be a uh, Space Engineers video. I tried to record one the other day, 
not yesterday. Yesterday I tried to record this video. Hopefully it's actually working. Uh, but uh, the day before yesterday, I tried to record a Space Engineers video. I got about 10 minutes into it, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go put things together and weld things. It's going to be boring, so I'm not going to record it. And then four hours passed. My station is huge. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.